Okay. Hopefully you guys can hear me now. Gotta love with starting a live stream with no audio. Um, and with that, we apologize for last week. We had a live stream scheduled, but as you can see, um, we had some technical difficulties right at the last minute that we just couldn't recover from, and I didn't have anything prepared. Um, so we ended up having to cancel last week. So welcome to this week's live stream. Uh, my name is Brad Tallis from Autodesk. On the keyboard, I have my friend Angelo Juris, um, who is answering the questions that you guys have in the chat. So if you have anything as we're going through, um, you know, any questions, throw them in the chat and Angelo will try and get those to me. Uh, we use like a shared Google Doc so I can kind of take a look uh, over and see the questions that are being asked. Um, also, uh, it's been crazy. So I haven't uploaded the uh, outline into the description of the video, but I will do that this afternoon. Um, so maybe wait a couple hours after this if you want to grab the outline um, to follow along. Um, at your own time. And it's been a joy seeing some of the people post what they've been doing with these live stream series out on Facebook. Um, some of you post some pictures and some renderings and all that kind of stuff. And I'll be honest, that totally makes our day when we see that you guys are actually able to um, you know, follow along and, and make the exact same things we're making. It makes us feel really proud to share our knowledge with you guys and then you're sharing that back with us. So thank you very much. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, we left off last time we created this extension arm assembly. Um, and then I'm just gonna kind of finish this up and we're actually really close to being done. We're gonna finish this extension arm assembly and then move it to the other side. And that's pretty much the end of the uh, miter saw stand. I'm probably gonna do one more episode doing like exploded drawings, um, like you would see like an assembly drawing or something like that. So it'll probably be one more episode for this and then I'll have to figure out something else to uh, teach. So if you have any ideas, please feel free to share them in the chat on what you'd like to see and we will try and make that happen. Okay, so I'm going to, we left off, we just, we finished this little end part here on this roller. Uh, and now there's like, a, there's like a part that you can kind of flip up and over that be, acts as like a stop. So that's what we're gonna be creating next. So I'm gonna create a new, let me go ahead and activate this um, extension arm assembly. I'm gonna create a new component called roller pin. So let me go ahead and move this over here. I definitely recommend you name your components. Uh, makes things much easier to find. So I'm going to create a component called roller pin. And like I showed last time, I like to use some of these primitives. Instead of having to create a sketch, you know, just to create a, you know, a pin, instead of creating a sketch and then drawing a circle and dimensioning it and all kind of stuff, I can just get away with creating a cylinder. And I'm just going to do it on this front face right here. And kind of, kind of near where I need it to be, I'm just going to click over here somewhere. Okay, so let's go ahead and make that 11.5 in diameter, um, and and then in length, I'm going to make that or in height, I guess. And I showed this last time. I'm in millimeters right now. You can see that here, but I can also type in other units. So for example, 11.25 in for inch, and you can see that it's going to do the conversion for me. So I don't have to use a calculator or anything like that. Okay. Um, then what we're gonna do is chamfer these edges with a small chamfer. And let's just do maybe something like uh, 0.5 millimeters or whatever. You can see it kind of deburs the, the edges of that. Then I'm gonna use the joint command to put it where I want it to be. Okay. So I'm going to um, change my motion type. I know I want it to be a revolute and you'll notice there's two different tabs, the position and the motion. I like to kind of jump over here and say, well, I'm gonna do a revolute joint and then I'm gonna come back here and specify how I want to position that. And hopefully you've seen enough of my live streams that I have a little saying that I use when I create these joints. Which one do I wanna move? And where do I want to move it to? 
That's kind of how I remember. Well, this is the one I want to move. I want to move it to this other part. So I know that it's asking for basically this rod right here. And you'll notice as I hover over the cylindrical face, I get like a start, a middle, and an end point. So I'm going to grab this middle point right here. And then I'm just going to come over to this cylinder here. And just like the other one, it has a start, a middle, and an end. So I'm going to grab the middle there. And you'll see that it positions it right where I need it to be, lined up in the center. Now, the last thing it's asking for is this snap. Um, well, actually, I guess, no, I already did that. So I'm going to go ahead and let's jump over to the motion. It'll be hard to see, but if I were to hit play, it's actually revolving. I can kind of see the shadow moving slightly, but I know that that's correct. And I'll say OK. So I've just positioned that roller pin. Now I'm going to activate my extension arm assembly because I'm going to create another new component here. And I'm going to create a sheet metal component. So I'm going to jump over to my sheet metal tab. And now you're going to see why did I activate this top level assembly. Well, I need to create a sheet metal component. And I want it to be underneath this extension arm assembly. If I had left my roller pin active and I said, sheet metal new component it would have put it underneath this roller pin and obviously that's not what I want so I'm going to activate this guy I'll say new component and now you can see it's going to create a sheet metal component just like before I can give it a name I'm gonna call this work piece oops, stop and I'm going to expand open this library so you can see I've already done some sheet metal parts in this design um, but if I expand open this library I can see all of the different kinds of materials that I have and I want to pick the stainless steel millimeter so I'm going to go ahead and do that one there sorry stainless steel millimeter if I expand that open I can see what the thickness is what the K factor etc so that's a little tip if you want to know what size that is you can expand open any of these here's steel you can see 2.5 if I expand you know this guy open you can see that's inch 0.1 etc so I'm gonna say stainless steel millimeter and now you can see I have a new sheet metal part underneath the extension arm assembly called workpiece stop okay I love our sheet metal module it's allows you to create sheet metal parts very very quickly so I'm going to just start with a basic shape um, like a rectangle and then I'm going to start folding that shape so start with a rectangle here I want it to be um, 260 millimeters wide let me 260 by um, 50 millimeters tall and there is my shape If I use this flange command, if I hover over it, you'll notice it's actually like multiple commands in one. So it can create sheet metal faces or flanges. Well, right now I don't have anything except for a profile. So I'm going to say flange. I'm going to click on that and you'll see it's going to use my sheet metal rule, the material that I picked and the thickness for it. And it's going to create a sheet metal component for me. Then I can come along and start you know, modifying this. So I could come up to this flange command, or I could pre-select. For example, I'm going to pre-select that back edge. I'm going to right mouse click. And you'll notice at about 4 o'clock is the flange command. So I don't even have to go up to the menu. So I pre-select that edge. I'm going to right click and say flange. And I personally like to start to drag to kind of visually see what's going on. And you can see how it's going to bend that over. Okay. So for this, I want the height to be uh, 13. You can kind of see how that updates. And then we have a lot of options here like angle, height datum, bend position, etc. Um, I'm going to leave this to be outer faces. 
And if you don't know what these mean, I highly recommend watching um, my live stream on just the sheet metal module itself. I go into a lot of detail about what the height datum and bend positions mean. Um, in fact, I even create like a cardboard box and show how, how to do like these folded cardboard boxes. So keep an eye out for that. Um, in fact, I'll try and link that in the description of the video. Um, so height datum, I'm going to say outer. Um, bend position, I'm going to say adjacent. And watch what happens when I say adjacent. You can kind of see how it moved up a little bit. So you can kind of see having different options here give me different results. And, and so I'm going to say adjacent. And that'll make more sense here a little bit as we keep going. I'll say OK. And I'm going to do the exact same thing here. I'm going to click this front edge and say flange. I'll start to drag to kind of see what that looks like. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to do, instead of a full edge, I'm going to do a symmetric. And watch what happens when I do this. I get these arrows. And if I start to drag these arrows, you're going to see it's going to create a symmetric flange. And you'll also notice if I zoom up here, there's some bend reliefs. And we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. But I want the distance to be 107 millimeters. And you'll see that kind of updates. So this is 107 millimeters wide right here. Um, the overall height, I only want it to be 19 millimeters. So you can see how the height was shortened a little bit. We'll do outer faces. We'll do adjacent. But I don't want to have this corner relief like this. I want to do what's called a tear. So right here is override rules. I'm going to expand that open. And I want to do a bend relief override. So bend override would allow me to change like the radius of this bend right here. Bend relief is this little thing that you're seeing right here. So I'm going to check that on. And you can see bend relief is straight. Well, watch what happens if I go to round. You'll see that kind of changes to a round relief. Or if I go to tear, you kind of see it just doesn't have one at all. It's going to kind of tear the material there. And that's kind of what I want in this case. So I just did this bend relief override. And we'll say OK. Now think about like if I were to have to model this by hand without using sheet metal, yeah, totally doable. But man, that would take me some time and some effort. But all I really did was create a rectangle we you know thickened it with the with the flange command and then I did the top flange and then I did this bottom flange now I want to create some side tabs so just like before I'm going to pre-select that edge and um, I'm going to come in here to flange now if I start to drag watch what happens here it, it starts to kind of give me a preview of what that's going to look like well, again, I don't want to do a full edge. Now, last time I did a symmetric. This time I'm going to do what's called a two offset. And when I do a two offset, you'll notice my menu gets a little bit larger and you see these references. So I can actually specify how far from this first reference do I want the tab to start. So for example, I could come in here and say, and you can see how they're labeled reference one and reference two. So on this bottom one here, I want to come up five and a half millimeters. So you can see I typed in minus 5.5 millimeters. And for this other offset, I want to do um, 22 millimeters. And you can see how it brought that way down. So I'm basically able to kind of put this tab where I want along that edge. And just like before, I don't want to have a bend relief. So I'm going to change that to a tear. And then the last thing I need to do is specify like how far does this tab come out? And that is this height. So we're going to say 40. And we can see that sure enough, it creates that tab. Pretty quick and pretty easy. So I looked over at the questions that Angelo um, is 
bringing into this document, and he said, a question from Greg Hale. You mentioned a while back about doing a Cessna Skymaster drawing. Any chance of doing this in the future? And I think this is actually humorous because I thought about that this morning. I have them hanging up. In fact, let me uh, switch to my uh, camera here. I mean, I actually have them hanging up right here in my, uh, um, sorry, the my light and all that kind of stuff. So yes, I Greg, I want to do that. I haven't had the time to do that, but it is on my list. And it might be a, a future upcoming one just because I, I was looking at it no joke this morning going, man, I really want to do that. So thanks for asking that and kind of freaky that you were thinking what I was thinking today. So, um, so Steve asked, does Brad have ghosting turned off? And what I think he means by that is a preference. So let me go ahead and show this. I'm going to click on my preferences. And it takes a, a minute or not a minute. It takes a second for it to kind of come up. And under the design, you'll notice show ghosted result body. I do have that turned off. And this is a personal preference of mine. Um, if, if I were to have that turned on, let me go ahead and apply this. And it's been a long time since I've done this. If I were to, I think just making a physical change, like if I were to do a press pull, um, yeah, see now it's not maybe not doing it. Maybe, I might have to, restart fusion to have that happen but i think it shows the original and then it shows the update or whatever and i just i like to look at it just like i'm physically changing the model i don't really personally like that ghosted result thing so i have it turned off so steve to answer your question yes i do have that turned off and i mean i personally recommend having it turned off just a personal preference um, so I'm going to turn that guy off. So, okay. So we created that tab. Now I want to, um, fill at these edges. Now I showed in a previous live stream that we have a really cool new fillet feature called full round fillet. Unfortunately, it doesn't work yet with sheet metal parts. And you can kind of see why, like I'm, as I'm hovering over this face right here, you know, it kind of knows that that was originally this other face and all that kind of stuff. I do know that they're working on this to add it into the sheet metal. So I can't do a full round fillet right here. However, I'll show you a cool tip um, in case you can't do a full round fillet, I want to do a full round fillet here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that edge. But what do I need to type in for the distance? I have no idea. So I could click on these three little dots right here and say measure. Then I can click on an edge and watch what it does. <laughs> it measured that edge and entered that number into there. So 22.5. Well, that's too big. I want half of that. So I'm going to come in here and say divided by two. And now it took basically the length of this edge here and divided it by two. And sure enough, I get that result. And let me go ahead and add in that edge there. And you can see I basically get a full round fillet. So once again, I was just clicking on these three little dots. It shows my last numbers I've entered in my in here, but then also that measure option. So cool little tip there. Okay. Then the last thing I want to do is to um, put a hole through here. And again, I, I love the hole command. So I'm gonna come up here, say hole. I purposely click kind of away from where it needs to be. So you can kind of see I clicked up there and that's where it showed up. Then I can click and drag, and you'll notice when I click and drag, I get these two little white dots that are below the circle there. This right dot is the center of my fillets over here. This left dot is the center of the whole face. You can almost think of it as the center or the centroid of that face. Well, all I have to do is get kind of near this dot and you kind of see it snap into place. It just clicks right into place. And I now know that that hole is perfectly centered with 
my fillets there. I didn't have to create a sketch, draw a circle, add dimensions, all that kind of stuff. All I need to do now is type in the correct diameter, 12. And then instead of a distance, I like to say, go to a particular face. So I'm gonna say, go to, let's rotate around, let's click that face there. And it knows that it needs to drill all the way through to that face. And I might even say, let's just do a, a flat. I'll say, okay. Now, why did I say to that face? Well, if I ever change the thickness of this material, I always want that hole to go through. So if I made this a little bit thicker and I said only go two millimeters in or two and a half millimeters in and we change it to a four millimeter thickness, it's not gonna go all the way through. But by saying go always to this face, no matter how thick that face becomes, the hole will always go through it. So a neat little tip there. Okay, so I just spent some time creating this tab. Well, I want the same thing over here. And this is another thing that blows me away with our sheet metal is you can actually mirror features and it'll still unfold. And what do I mean by that? Well, check this out. I'm gonna say unfold. I'm gonna unfold all the bends. I click on um, this stationary entity and we can see that sure enough, everything unfolds, okay? Well, now I need to mirror, but I created this kind of out in space somewhere. So I don't have, like if I turn on my origin, it's way over here somewhere. So I don't have a mirror plane. So I need to create one. So under construct, mid plane, creates a construction plane at the midpoint between two faces. Select two faces or planes, okay. So I'm gonna say this face here and this face here, and you'll see it created a plane between those two faces. I'll say okay, and then check this out. I'm gonna come in here and say mirror. Now by default, it says faces. I hardly ever use the faces. I almost always use features. So I'm gonna to switch to features, and I want to mirror the flange. So this last flange, in fact, you can kind of see when I uh, hover over it, it kind of highlights the, the flange right there. I also want to mirror the fillets and I want to mirror the hole. I don't need to mirror the construction plane. So I selected three features out of my timeline. What's my mirror plane? This is my mirror plane. Kind of gives you a little bit of a preview of what that's gonna look like. I'm gonna say okay. And that mirrored over to the other side. We turn off my construction. Now, one thing I like to do is I wanna say, is that still a sheet metal part? Well, I can check that by coming in here and saying unfold. What's my stationary entity? This guy here, and notice it still unfolds. So that's a verification that it is a valid sheet metal component. The fact that we were able to mirror that feature over to the other side, I just think is huge. Okay. Um, don't like to have sharp edges here, so I'm going to select a couple edges and just fillet these. Um, let's just do maybe like a five millimeter fillet. So I'm gonna grab a bunch of edges here. I think there's six in total. So I'm just gonna kind of zoom up. Here's another trick. There's an edge here. If I just kind of get near it, you can kind of see it's because I'm in the fillet command, it allows me to kind of probe through and grab that fillet that's kind of hidden. Same thing with this guy here. I don't even have to rotate. I just kind of get where the edge is and I'll go ahead and click. And we've added in all of those edges. In fact, six of them. And that is our sheet metal part. It didn't take very long to create. And if I were to try and model that by hand, yes, it's doable, but that would take quite a bit of time, quite a bit of effort, I think. So let's go ahead and position this in place. So I'm going to create a, um, I'm gonna go ahead and activate my extension arm assembly and let's just create a revolute joint. Cause I want it to revolve around that pin. 
So sure enough, Revolut. Now, I want this to be centered. So I don't really have a, a location to pick, right? I mean, I could grab like here, but where on this pin does that go? So here is where between two faces really comes into play. So check this out. I'm gonna say between two faces, and what's the first plane? I'll grab this guy here. What's the second plane? I'll grab that guy there. Okay, now it doesn't look like anything happened, but watch what happens when I get near like the edge of this circle here. You can see the joint origin is now kind of in the middle on a plane. So it, it's basically creating a joint origin centered on this circle between those two faces. So all I have to do is click. So it created that point right there. Then all I have to do is, for example, hover over this rod or this pin and grab the center point there. And watch what this does. <laughs> it positions it and it does a revolute joint. Let me go back here. And it perfectly locates it where it needs to be. Now I want to um, come back here and let's rotate this guy. Let's rotate it over onto this side over here, 90 degrees. Great, we positioned it. But as I zoom up, I notice an issue. And this is the power of fusion and using, for example, the sheet metal. We notice that it's clashing. So let's go back and edit this workpiece stop. And if I look at this, maybe I could maybe shorten that a little bit or maybe lengthen the arms, give it a little bit of extra room. There's not a lot of room right there. So I'm gonna go back and edit this feature way back in time. This is where we created that flange. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit that feature. Now it looks like it disappeared. Well, why did it look like it disappeared? Well, we went back in time and we went back before we positioned the part. So the, the part is back here where we originally created it. And maybe instead of 40 millimeters, we just add maybe like, let's just add 10 more. So let's just go 50 millimeters. And you can see how that preview updated a little bit. And watch what happens when I say, okay. Everything downstream updated, so the fillet, the hole, you notice the hole is still in the correct location, the mirror, and all the small fillets, and the position where it needs to be, and we can see that sure enough we have enough clearance now. So I was able to go back and make that change, and I just think that's huge. You, you might not know that it's going to clash until you start positioning these parts together, and you need to make that change. So if you like that, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't know about that, um, let me see, it looks like no questions. So, okay. So I saw AL had a comment um, about having a Zoom session. Let me switch to my camera here. Um, having a Zoom session after this. Unfortunately, I do have a hard stop at the top of the hour, so we can't do it on this one. But definitely keep an eye out. And in fact, I think it's already public out into the Fusion 360 um, Facebook group. We are doing a chat with the experts session. And it's going to be like myself and Angelo and Lars and Jeff, some guest speakers, all that kind of stuff. And it's just going to be this open forum. Um, where you can come in and join us and chat with us, maybe show off some of the stuff you've been working on, uh, ask questions, that kind of a thing. So definitely keep an eye out for that. I, I think it's public now. Um, so I'm gonna give that as my answer to you, Al. So um, let's jump back in. Okay. So moving on here. So we got that where it needs to be. Um, so, what I want to do now, there's a basically a sheet metal clip and a knob that kind of pins this extension arm into place. That's what we're gonna be doing next. 
So I'm gonna create a hole for that. So I'm, I activate my extension arm assembly. I'll use the hole command. In fact, I, I'm still in the sheet metal tab. Let me, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna jump back to here. Use the hole command. I click out where it doesn't make sense and then I drag it to where it does make sense. So you'll notice that one dot in the center of that face. I'm just gonna go like that. And the hole is perfectly centered. I didn't have to reference anything or do any dimensions. It's so quick. I'm gonna do a nine millimeter hole for this. Um, again, I'm, instead of distance, I'm gonna say two. And I'm gonna rotate a little bit. I'm just gonna click this inside face like that. So it's just gonna drill as far as it needs to. I don't want it to go into this other part. In fact, if I expand open objects to cut, I can see that it's only cutting one part. Okay. Some of this is pretty repetitive. I'm going to bring in a McMaster car component. I want to bring in a nut. And again, to speed things up, I typed in the... Um, McMaster car number for that. So 90592-alpha022, and I search for that. It actually finds the metric eight medium strength steel hex nut. I can come in here and say, I want this as like a step file. I can even say step file with no threads if I don't want any threads on it, but let's just leave it like that. I'll say download. And this is gonna allow me to bring in this metric eight nut. Now it brought it in at the origin, it usually does. So I'm gonna bring it kind of where it needs to be. I could rotate it, but there's no need to. I'm just gonna go ahead and say okay. And we'll create a rigid joint. Which one do I wanna move? This is the one I wanna move. So I'm just gonna hover over like a circular edge and you can kind of see it, it grabs that center point right there. Where do I wanna move it to? I wanna move it to this edge over here. So I'm gonna click there and you can see it instantly positions that part. Now some of you might like be like, oh, I don't want the peak at the very top. Well, I can just rotate this, right? I don't have to leave that point at the very top. I could rotate that, you know, 60 degrees or whatever. and say okay okay now I'm gonna create the sheet metal part and again I don't have the a live example of this I wish I could show you the finished what it looks like but it's basically a really thin piece of sheet metal that when you tighten down the knob it kind of pinches in between here and just basically keeps it from sliding up and down it'll make more sense once we uh, um, create the part now I I said some key words there. It's a very thin sheet metal part. In fact, only 0.6 millimeters in thickness. So I'm gonna jump back to my sheet metal and under modify, I have this sheet metal rules. And in this design, I've got two and a half millimeter thickness, two and a half millimeter thickness. I'll expand open my library. And if I expand open all of these guys, you're gonna see that I don't have anything that's 0.6 millimeters in thickness, okay? Except for the one that I've already created. So let me go ahead and delete that guy. So what I'm gonna do is I want it to be stainless steel. So I'm gonna hover over this stainless steel and you'll notice two icons, the edit rule and new rule. So I could edit any existing rule or I could say new rule and it's gonna copy the settings. So you can see it says stainless steel, it's two and a half, there's my K factor. Well, I'm gonna come in here and say, I want this to be 0 0.6. And I might even come in here and say, let's make this like 0 0.6. That's just the description, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna leave everything else the same. I'm gonna leave the K factor and everything else the same. I'll hit save. And now you'll notice, let me click up here. You'll notice I have a new material that's 0 0.06, if I expand that open, 0 0.06. So I can reuse any existing ones to help me make a new material. Okay. 
I'm going to create a sketch on this face here. I'll say create a sketch. I want to grab some information, so I'm going to project um, some information here. I want to know basically where this body is right here, so I'm going to project that guy. I'll say OK. And then this is a little bit of an approximation. I'm just kind of eyeballing what I want this to look like, but you'll notice I can snap to this edge here now. So I'm going to go ahead and click there. I'm going to come up a little bit, something like that. Come over. Oops, and let me uh, go ahead and do the line again. Um, and I'm just going to, I want it to kind of just barely touch this um, nut like that. And I'll say OK. OK, so I'll throw a dimension on here now. <laughs> wow, I was really close. I wanted it to be 55, and it was 55.9. <laughs> uh, I want this to be equal length to that. So I'm going to say equal that edge and that edge and you can see now they're equal length and honestly I really don't care how big that is right now I'm just gonna leave it alone I know it's not a fully constrained sketch but in this case it doesn't really matter right now I might come back and define it a little bit later but I now have that sketch we'll use the flange command and check this out I just created this open profile it's not a rectangle or anything like that it's an open profile and if I click on this I can start to drag and you'll notice a couple issues first of all that I did <laughs> I didn't create a new sheet metal component so I should have done that and I should have done it before I did my sketch but that's okay I'm gonna say new component and we're gonna call this um, plate and I'm going to pick I totally forgot to do this the joys of live um, so I'm gonna pick that new material 0.6 okay flange I'll click on that guy start to drag and now we notice much thinner material yay <laughs> okay um, what's the distance I'm going to say um, we want it to be 25, so I'm going to say minus 25 in this case. Now you'll notice a couple issues. It's actually like inside the part right now. I could change this thickness to side 2, and you'll see that it goes inside like that. And that is what I want in this case. So you have the ability to specify which side or you could even say symmetric, and so it kind of goes around, oops, sorry, my bad, right here, symmetric. And you can see it's going half the distance up and half the distance down. So I'm going to do side two in this case, and I'm just going to go ahead and say 25 millimeters. It does the bends for me automatically, which is pretty cool. I'll go ahead and say OK. But it's in the wrong spot right I, I used this face here to kind of create my profile so let's go ahead and position it where it needs to be so I'm gonna say joint I want it to be a rigid joint and here's a neat little tip I'm gonna zoom up a little bit here and if I hover over this line you'll see that it has a start a middle and an end so I'm gonna just click on that middle point and then I'm going to do the same thing here. I want basically that edge to kind of ride along this edge here. I'm going to grab the middle point there. And we can now see that that is perfectly centered. And it's kind of sitting down where I want that to be. Now it's not sitting flush, but I, you know, because this is bent, it really wouldn't do that. So it's basically lining up that edge with that other edge. And that's what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK and it is now in the correct location. I know we're going through at a pretty good pace here. A lot of this is kind of repetitive, um, but you can kind of see how we're building things and positioning things where they need to be. Well, now I obviously need to have a hole in this sheet metal part. So I'm gonna click on this face, right mouse click, and you'll notice that because I'm in the sheet metal, um, I don't see the whole command. Usually the whole command is over here. Okay. 
So I could go to create and do whole, or I could hit the H key and it brings up my whole command. So I'm gonna do that. I'll click on this face. Now I do want this to be in a very specific position. And you'll notice as I'm moving around, some dimensions kind of are hopping on the screen a little bit. And this is that reference that you see right here. So I'm gonna reference this left edge and I want that to be 12.5 um, over. And then I'm gonna come down here and reference this bottom edge and I want that to be 24. And now you can see <laughs> that's pretty much lined up uh, with that nut. Okay, and maybe I could even come in here and say make that you know 23 or 23.5. You know I have some flexibility there on what where I want that hole to be. In this case, I'm just going to say 20, oops, 24. Uh, what size? I want it to be a 10 and a half. So 10.5. Say okay. Oh, actually, I want it instead of distance. Again, I'm going to say two and pick that inside face so it only goes through that sheet metal part and there we go we now have a hole through the sheet metal part and you can kind of see what's going to happen here when we when we tighten this down it's going to push the screw against this sheet metal flange back here which is going to kind of bind it against this um, extension arm so that's kind of the the idea behind this Okay, let's fill it um, six millimeters. Again, I don't even have to rotate. I can just pick those two edges, say okay. Okay, a couple questions. Um, so, Ayal made a really good point. Um, he, he said, because Brad screwed up, <laughs> Where is the sheet metal sketch? Now, typically you say create a sheet metal component and then the sketch is underneath that sheet metal component. That's how it's supposed to work. But because I forgot to do that, the sheet metal, um, let me uh, switch over here. The sketch for that, if I expand open this plate, you'll notice that it doesn't have a sketches folder. But if I come in here, here is my sketch. So it's underneath my extension arm assembly. So it's right there. So yeah, not the best method. I should have, I didn't want to undo and redo my sketch and waste time and all kind of stuff. I should have. So A, all good point there. Um, and then Stuart, kind of to add on to that, can you move a sketch to another component? Um, so let's see, can I just drag that sketch onto my plate? Cut and paint of a sketch with a dependent sheet metal feature is not supported, you know. So unfortunately, in this case, it doesn't look like I can. Let me try and drag it underneath it, like into here maybe. Yeah, so in this example, it won't let me. In other situations, it might let you. And again, it's not always as um, cut and dry as you would expect it to be because where the sketch was created in time. So... Let me actually try one more thing. Let me activate the extension arm assembly and now let me see if that will let me do it. I don't think it will. Yeah, it won't. So I should have undo, done, undone my uh, sketch and had it underneath my plate. So slap of the hand for me on that. Okay. Um, uh, and then somebody else asked a question, how would you go back and correct the reference of the hole? So on the sheet metal part, if I double click on my hole feature, you'll notice it says reference one selected and it's at 12 and a half. Reference two, one selected is 24. So I could hit this little X right here and then select my reference. Now it should, let me click on an edge. Let me go select. Maybe it won't. Oops, clicked wrong. That's a good question. I would have expected me to be able to reference that. And it's not letting me. 
Okay, I will have to delve deeper into why is it not letting me do that. Uh, maybe I have to let me clear both references. And say reference. Yeah, that's it is interesting. So let's do face. Don't know. That that's a great question. I will bring that up. <laughs> I, th I always thought you could go back and re-reference, but maybe you can't. Um, okay, so in that situation, basically what I would do is go before that and create another hole if need be or something like that and just suppress that hole there. But let's keep moving forward because I'm going to run out of time, unfortunately, and I do have a hard stop at the top of the hour. Um, okay. So to finish this up, I'm going to insert in another McMaster car component, um, which is a yellow plastic knob. So 2907T27. Um, I'm just going to search for that. And you can see it finds the seven arm grip knob. And let me expand that guy open a little bit, say download. It's going to bring it in at my zero, 00, my origin. So let's drag that over. And I'm just going to go ahead and say, okay, I could rotate it and all that kind of stuff, but because I'm going to create a joint, it doesn't really matter in this case. Now, what does matter is where I want this, this face here to be flat with the, the, you know, sheet metal part basically. So I'm going to hover over this edge. And it's going to grab that center point there. And then I'm going to come in over here and just hover over this face. And you can see I can grab that center point right there. Now I could also, and I don't want to, I'm not going to turn the parts off. I would probably turn this part off to actually grab the sheet metal part. But just because I'm falling behind in time, I'm just going to grab that point there. And you're going to see that it brings and lines up that point. And we can see that my hole is big enough for that to go through. I could make it a revolute if I wanted to. I'll go ahead and say OK. Change the appearance. I'm going to just hit A for appearance. That's the shortcut. I'm just going to drag that appearance on there like so. OK. Cool. So the next thing I'm going to do is there's a plastic component that goes here. And I'm going to create a new component. So I made sure my extension arm is active. I'll say new component. Now notice it remembered my last component type was a sheet metal component. Well, I'm going to say I want it to be a standard component. And now I can come in and say, let's just call this um, frame end cap. And you'll see a new regular component called frame end cap. Let me minimize some of these guys. OK. Just like before, um, let me switch to my solid tab. I'm going to create a primitive, a box primitive. And let's just do this um, maybe like on the side plane because it's kind of lined up with the side here. I'm just going to draw out in space somewhere, 30 by 30. And I want it to be pretty thin, actually. I think it's only 3 millimeters. Now, you're going to see some interesting things here. I'm going to purposely make a mistake, and then we're going to fix that. And I think it's pretty cool. And it's actually a trick. I think Blaze Barrett actually showed me this trick. I want, I want to give a shout out to him because I think he was the one that said, you should try this out. And you'll see that here in just a second. Um, OK, so what I'm going to do now is create a sketch on here, do a rectangle. And I want to do a centered rectangle. Now you'll notice I don't have like a center point, but there's a really cool tip here. If I hover over this edge, you can see if I move, I get kind of this snap guide. So it's kind of found the center of that edge. Well, now I'm going to hover over the center of this edge. And now I have these two snap guides. And it actually 
shows me right where the center is. So I'm going to click there and I found the center of that rectangle, of that face I should say. But this is going to come back and bite us here in a little bit and that's the tip I was going to show you. So I'm going to say 28, um, 28, I'll say okay. I'll rotate a little bit isometric. I'm, I'm still in my sketch, but I can go ahead and select this profile, right mouse click and say extrude. And it finishes my sketch for me automatically. I can come in and type in my distance, let's just say 10 millimeters, say okay. Now I want to shell this guy out. So I'm gonna grab that face, say shell three and a half according to my outline. Now I want to fill it a bunch of edges and this is kind of a little bit difficult to do. I have to click this edge and then say fill it and then I have to come in and select these other edges, potentially rotate around, all that kind of stuff. Well here's a neat trick. So I'm going to say fill it and then I'm just going to draw a box like so. I'm just going to kind of grab those two edges and let's just do two millimeters. Then I'm going to hold down my shift key. I want to add some extra stuff. So I'm going to hold down my shift key. I'm just going to draw a selection box around, I'm sorry, control key. <laughs> my bad. Control key and it should let me do that. Why is it not? Man, I am not having much luck today, am I? Control. That is, I'm getting weird results, guys. Um, let me try it down here. <laughs> Shift key, maybe it's control shift. There we go. Sorry, my bad, control shift. Okay, so let me start over. That is, I was getting weird results and I want to make sure I'm showing this correctly. So I'm gonna say fill it, draw a box. And you'll notice if I stop moving, um, it says specify fill it radius. So I'm gonna say two. And then it says hold control to modify selection. So if I hold down my control key, now it says select edges, faces, or features and stuff like that. So I could come in and click. Well, I'm gonna hold down control and shift and that's gonna allow me to add in extra edges. So I'm just kind of drawing boxes like so. Now be careful, don't draw too big. But like, for example, if I start up here, it's gonna select this inside edge. So for example, if I do that, I get the edges that I want, but I also get this extra edge I don't want. But I can always come in and just unselect it, and I've now selected eight edges using kind of like a window selection. I couldn't just draw a big box around the whole thing. It would select every edge, but I was able to kind of control my windows and grab what I want. Not the smoothest <laughs> method, I mean, that I showed, but let's go ahead and select this face and let's do a one and a half and check this out. I clicked on the face and it grabbed all of the edges that have to do with the face and filleted those. Now I could have grabbed just an edge and because chain is on, it would have gone all the way around, but I like to show that you can actually click on a face and it'll select all of the edges that are on that face. So we'll go ahead and say okay, and we now have that guy. Okay. Now, this fits into the end of the metal piece, and right now there's, it would be a pretty tight fit. You'd probably have to really hammer the thing in. So there's basically some grooves that are created in here um, that allow some flexibility. So I'm going to actually edit this original sketch let me kind of zoom out here and um, I'm going to, do, going to create a offset of this rectangle here and let's just do two millimeters. I'll say okay and hopefully you guys are cluing in on what's going on here but you'll notice that my sketch is not fully constrained and that's going to come back to bite us here in a little bit. I'm foreshadowing. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and extrude this profile. Oops, let me, uh, let me cancel out. I'll finish my sketch. That way we can kind of see what's going on here. And 
I'll expand this guy open so you can kind of see. So I'm going to grab this profile here and say extrude. And as I start to drag in this direction, you're going to see it's going to cut some material away. So I want to go three millimeters into the part and we want to cut that material. So I just created that little groove there. Well, I want another one. Well, I could extrude again with an offset and all that kind of stuff, but I'm just going to say pattern. Let's pattern this extrude feature. Which direction? I'm just going to pick like a line or a fit, you know, an edge or something like that that kind of defines the direction. I'm going to start to drag and it's going to give me kind of a preview of what it's doing here. Okay. Well, I only want two in that direction. And I'm going to say extent and the distance I want is to be five. So you can almost think of it as just a single pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And it took that one and it created a pattern of it. So could have copied and pasted. I could have re-extruded with an offset. Or I just used a pattern in this case. OK. Then one more thing here. I'm going to go back and edit the original sketch. draw a rectangle and I want to do a centered rectangle and I'm going to click on this edge right here and you'll notice it kind of finds the the center for me automatically I'm going to start to move now the height is really important so I'm going to type in 8 and then I'm going to hit tab now watch what happens when I come over and try and click on this edge you'll notice that it doesn't snap to it but if I move up here where that little plus symbol is, you'll see that it does snap to it. So if you're trying to move and it doesn't snap, try going to the other opposite corner and you'll see that sure enough, it's going to do a, a coincident constraint for me right there. I'll do the same thing here. Height needs to be eight. I'll tab over. If I get near this edge, I don't get anything. But if I come up there, it snaps. I'll say OK. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> Watch what happens if I grab this point. My whole sketch moves. Now, why is that? Well, it was because um, I did those snap guides. Remember those blue dashed lines? It's just a guide. It's nothing like a constraint or anything like that. So how would I fix this. Well, some of you might be able to draw a line from corner to corner and then make that point the midpoint of that line. That would absolutely work. But this is the tip I think Blaze, um, hopefully that's correct, I think he's the one that showed me this, is to hold down that shift key when you're doing a horizontal vertical. And this is kind of cool to watch. So I'm going to say horizontal vertical and I want this point to be vertical with the center of this edge right here, but you'll notice nothing's really showing up. But if I hold down my shift key, you'll see it's gonna find the center or the midpoint of this line. So watch what happens when I click there. You'll see some of my lines turn black. The ones that can't move horizontal anymore. Okay, so now let me do the same thing again. I'm still in my horizontal vertical I'm going to click that point there. I'm going to come over here, hold down my shift key, and you can see that icon appear. I'll click there, and notice my sketch is now fully constrained. I'll finish my sketch. We'll turn this guy back on, and then I can use these outside profiles. Let me grab that guy there. Say extrude to object. I mean, I could say all, but I don't want it to go backwards. So I'm going to say to object. I'm going to grab this front face and we can see that it's going to extrude that front face like so. And we now have this piece of plastic that can kind of snap into the end much easier. In fact, I'm going to hit A for appearance. 
grab our existing black plastic texture that we've been using. Okay, and then I want to position where it needs to go. We are going to go a few minutes over. I hope my customer on the I have a customer call at the top of the hour, so hopefully you won't mind being a few minutes late because I want to kind of finish this up. Um, I'm going to say let's create a joint, a rigid joint, and check this out. I'm going to hover over this face right here because this is kind of what's going to touch the, the metal part. And if I rotate a little bit, you'll notice there is a, a tick mark right at the center. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that guy there. And it's on the plane of this face right here. I'll zoom out a little bit. We'll zoom up on this guy, but you'll notice there's not something in the middle. But if I zoom up just a little bit more and I hover over this flat face here, I can actually click that point there and you see it perfectly snaps into place. We can kind of see how that you know slides into place there. I'll say okay. Okay, and then the last the last step basically is we want to um, copy this whole arm assembly and put it over here. So to do that, I'm going to activate my top level assembly. Um, so Ethan said he's a huge fan of the horizontal vertical constraints. Yep, I totally agree, especially that shortcut. I, I always forget about it, but that shift to catch to the center, I think, is a huge time saver instead of drawing a construction line and all that kind of stuff. OK, so we have this whole extension arm assembly. I'm going to right mouse click on it and say move copy. Now the first thing I want to do, make sure it's set to components, which it is. The first thing I want to do is say create copy before I do anything else. Then I can start to rotate and watch what it does. It creates a copy of it. I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees and maybe we just kind of move it sort of kind of where it needs to be, just over here somewhere. I'll say OK, and we now have an extension arm assembly too. We, uh, so there's the original, there's the new guy, and then all we have to do is create a joint. Let's do a slider joint because we want it to slide. And I want the, the center of this to slide through the center of that opening there. So I'm going to, again, use the between two faces. I want to find the center between that face and this face. Now watch the snap. And this is kind of hard to see, but it basically created a plane that slices through the middle of it. And then as I hover over this face, you can see a face has a start, a middle, and an end. And we can see this middle point right here when I click on that, it actually grabbed the middle of that pipe. And then the same thing over here, I'm going to say between two faces, between that face there and that face there. What's my snap? Now you'll notice when I hover over this face, it has that plane kind of in the middle and that middle point is right there. So I'm going to go ahead and click. Now my slider is going in the wrong direction, but that is an easy fix. Let's go X axis, zoom out a little bit. We can see that that works. And you're all going, well, how come it didn't move all that? Well, as soon as I say, okay, it knows that those all have to stay together. In fact, if I were to drag that arm, we can see that all of those move together. There's the sheet metal parts we've created all that kind of stuff and these are individual I can change the lengths of either of those or the positions of either of those okay I know that was a lot um, we went just a few minutes over but this is kind of the end of the the series here I'm gonna like I said I'm probably gonna do one more um, on doing like like an exploded view uh, with a, a parts list and all that kind of stuff um, so keep an eye out for that 
Um, I want to check the questions. It looks like um, looks like the questions are all good. So again, thank you everybody for attending. Um, sorry for the few little technical difficulties we had, um, and hope to see you on a future live stream. Have fun fusioning.